considers the motion of a spinning toy top. So the motion of a spinning toy top. And we're going to uh, put one end of the axle, the bottom end of the axle, on a firm support. If we were down at the uh, axle looking upward, we would see the top rotating clockwise. If you're looking from above, the top is rotating counterclockwise. So that can be a little confusing. You ought to um, review that and make your own motion of something that's spinning counterclockwise from your when you view it from above. Keep that same motion and put it above your head and look at it and you'll see that it's moving clockwise in its, uh, in its rotation. So moving counterclockwise viewed from above and that's the way I'm going to draw the picture. And we're going to discuss so what happens here and discuss the um, Earth-Moon system. Um, so we have an initial angular momentum vector that's out this way. So here's my initial angular momentum vector and L is its symbol. We find this initial angular momentum vector. It's along the axle of the uh, top axis of rotation. We're moving this way, so omega is counterclockwise if I'm looking from above. And I'd use my right hand to put my fingers around this wheel or this top in the direction of motion. And then my thumb points uh, along the direction of the axle and it's <coughs> in the direction of the angular momentum. Now this uh, toy top has a weight, a weight mg, and that creates a downward force on the top. This force has a lever arm back to the point of support. So there's going to be a torque on this system. We find the torque by doing the vector operation of cross product of a vector multiplication of these two vectors. And to do this, we have to first extend our fingers in the direction of the radius vector, and then rotate our wrist such that we can easily bend our fingers in the direction of the force. So this is a three-dimensional uh, operation that's tough to represent on a piece of paper. But uh, in the space you have in front of you, extend your fingers in the direction of the radius vector. Have your palm down so you can put your fingers down in the direction of the force. And you'll find your thumb pointed off to the left. And that's the direction of the torque. So I put that in the drawing. Uh, this doesn't quite do justice to it because this should be going into the paper. The torque is into the paper. The torque vector is always perpendicular to both the radius vector and the force vector. These two are in the plane of the paper. The torque vector is perpendicular. It goes into the page. Um, can't draw it here accurately in, in three dimensions. Now, the angular momentum changes when there's a torque on the system, um, an external torque. So this torque creates a, a change in the angular momentum vector with respect to time. And the direction of the torque and the direction of the angular momentum, new angular, additional angular momentum, is, uh, is the same. So we can look at the new angular momentum vector. It's going to be the old angular momentum vector plus delta L. We'll do vector addition here. And just uh, graphically doing the vector addition, here's my original L goes out in space. Delta L is into the page again. Can't really do it justice here. But into the page and that produces the new L over here. So the angular momentum vector is now pointed in a different direction. The axis of the toy top is pointed in a different direction. And this toy top is going to if it was originally like this, it's going to shift over a little bit and continuing to move around in a circle in space. The axis of the toy top is going to wobble in space. Perhaps you've seen that motion. That motion is called precession. Precession. So this wobbling motion of the axis of rotation of a rotating object is caused by this torque. The torque changes or gives us a delta L change in the angular momentum and 
vector addition shows us the new new L. We're not doing any numbers in this uh, in this video, just doing the effect. What about the Earth? Well, the Earth is a little bit bigger than a toy top, but it also has this effect. The Earth's axis has a precession circle on the sky, and it takes 23,000 years for the Earth to wobble one time. The Earth has a really huge L, and uh, the delta L created by the gravity from the moon. Uh, our Earth is not perfectly uh, spherical, and there's some pulls from the moon on the Earth giving us a, uh, a wobbling effect. We end up with a wobbling effect that the uh, Earth wobbles once every 23,000 years. Um, so right now, this, this represents the uh, <coughs> place on the sky that the Earth's north pole points towards. Right now, for several hundred years, before now and after now, Polaris is near that point on the sky where the Earth's rotation axis uh, is directed towards. The Polaris we call our North Star. Any night of the year, any hour of the night, you can see Polaris in the north. if you live in the northern hemisphere. If you live below the equator, you never see Polaris. Uh, if you live in the southern hemisphere. But in the northern hemisphere, we can always see Polaris at some angle above the horizon. If you're at the North Pole, Polaris is overhead. If you uh, live in the United States, Polaris is about halfway up the sky uh, from the horizon, depending on the state that you live in. Uh, but we have Polaris as a North Star because right now the Earth's rotation axis points towards this spot in the sky. But it was not always so. Uh, what civilization was prominent about 5,000 years ago? Uh, the Egyptian civilization. And at that time, there was a star in the constellation of Draco. Draco is a constellation near Polaris. Not, not, not real close, not far away. But look it up on a sky map. But the constellation of Draco contains a star Thuban. It's not a really bright star, but it's, it's visible. Um, and about 3,000 years ago, the Earth's rotation axis pointed towards a star. And it turns out the pyramids have one side of the pyramid facing the star. So there's some indication uh, that the Egyptians knew about the northness on the sky. And uh, astronomy is an old science, an observational science. Um, so we have this civilization, the Egyptians, lining up their pyramids with Thuban in the uh, in the sky, uh, 3000 BC. So it's a little curiosity, but this precession effect is real. You can see it in toy tops. You can see it in the motion of the Earth. Uh, the Earth's axis moves, points to a place on the sky, goes around about 23,000 years. So. 23,000 years from now, if there is a civilization on the Earth, uh, again, Polaris would be the North Star. But you know, 2,000 years from now, Polaris is not going to be real close to the uh, North Celestial Pole on the sky. So study a little astronomy and uh, you get some more of that if you're interested. Ask your instructor about precession, about torque, and the change in angular momentum.